Here's the other part about this. Normally something like this to have made up just one is hundred bucks or something. Yeah, morning. Cost us thirty five bucks. Because the sign maker paid for half. Hey, hold it up. Don't take it away yet. Okay. Up a little higher. Beautiful. One more. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. There's no more questions. We're going to need to get started this morning. If there's no more announcements. It's good to have Brian back with us. How are you feeling nowadays? Okay, my breathing attacks have stopped. Praise the Lord. The last time I was in the hospital was in August. Pardon? In August was the last time I was in the hospital. No. I was having these breathing attacks. felt like a brain freeze going to my chest. My heart is fine. My blood pressure is under control now. Uh, praise, praise the Lord. The Lord. this thing to take off. Lord, 
Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with song. The Lord is great God and a great king above all gods. And in his hand are the deep places of the earth. The straight of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. I want you to turn over to Job chapter 4. In Job chapter 4, verses 17 through 21, we read this. Now you remember this. This is the passage where old Eliphaz, um, one of Job's friends, and we always say with friends like that, who these enemies, where he thought he was talking to an angel of the Lord, and instead he's talking to a demon. And uh, here, this demon is saying to Eliphaz, as the devil says to us today, Shall mortal man be more just than his God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Remember what he said to Eve in the garden. Does God say that you will die? Surely you're not going to die, right? But you'll be like gods. Well, here he's telling Eliphaz, Behold, he put no trust in his servants, and his angels he charged with folly. In other words, he's trying to make a point. What in the world makes you think that God cares anything for you? Look how he treated his angels. He locked them in the lowest parts of the pits of earth. In chains. How much less than them that dwell in houses of clay whose foundations is in the dust which are crushed before the moths. They're destroyed from morning to evening. They perish forever without any regarding. If not their excellency which is in them go away. They die even without wisdom. So the idea is he's trying to dishearten Eliphaz, convince him that God really doesn't care too much for us puny human beings at all. And so, if you turn over also to Hebrews chapter 11. And in Hebrews chapter 11, here uh, we see that Abraham, and we're going to take a look as we read verses 8 through 16. Now Abraham, he could see a city of faith and by faith, but he could see it afar off, and he could only see it in, uh, in a vision. Okay, uh, We can see it a lot more clearly because John, the revelator, uh, describes it absolutely perfectly in Revelation 21 and 22. So we don't always, we always need to remember that we our pilgrims, we're just passing through this world. We won't be here very long, so we need not become too attached to the things that this world has to offer, folks. Uh, again, like I said, we're not going to be here that long. In fact, this year, I can't believe how many friends that I've had died this year. And we're going to take a little look at what happens when we leave this world here as we go through this. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance, obey, and he went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith, he sojourned in a land of promise, in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Though faith also, Sarah, herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even one of them, and him as good as a dead. As many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have a return. But now they desire a better country, that is a heavenly, wherefore 
God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. He that had received the promises offered up to his only begotten son. Well, here we go back to Psalm 95 and verse 7. He is our God, we are his are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. <clears throat> Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways, and to whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Well, folks, we all have one, one great big giant commission called the Great Commission. We, uh, everybody in here has family or friends that are lost. Family or friends that if they died today, they would spend eternity in a fiery, fiery <coughs> pit of hell. Yeah. And so, we, knowing what? Not to get too attached to this world, we're just passing through this world. Exactly. We're not going to be here long. And uh, when, I, when I look back at this year so far, which is not even over with how many friends that I've lost, how many friends now, uh, and when we look all around the world, how people are dying, just like the demon had told Eliphaz. They're dying all day long and all night long. And so our job is to reach as many as quickly as we can with the gospel. All these material things that people think so dear, they're all going to burn. They're going to burn! It's all going to be gone one day. And so, we go to verse, uh, to Psalm 96. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless His name, show forth His salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Now, folks, um, all of these things, when you're talking about idols and idolatry, uh, God doesn't have to be made out of wood or stone, something that a God can be a lot of things. A God can be an antique car. You know, we see that. Sometimes a God could be somebody's new house that they're building, they're working on. Gods can be anything. I've seen people whose, whose clothing, whose dress, you know, that's, they, they spend all their obsessed with, with wearing the, the best and the nicest uh, clothes. Uh, I've seen guys that, that were just obsessed with the... Uh, They've shined their shoes, and the shoes are the shiniest shoes where you can see yourself, and, and they'll make sure nobody gets close enough to step to stand on their shoes. Uh, there are things, when, when you do this, and these things become God. What is a God? Anything that you give more time and more attention to than God. Let me tell you something. If you're spending more time during a week watching TV than you are studying the Bible, that's a sin. Amen. You need to be going to the Word of God. That's a sin. Now, someday, you'll be reminded of that very clearly. You need to be in that Word of God daily, every day. Amen? Amen. There's no greater source of wisdom and knowledge. And by the way, the day will come. This will happen. Like I'm always telling you, there is no chance at all that this won't happen. The day will come when the only thing that will matter to you what's in here. That you're standing with the Lord Jesus. That is going to happen for everybody in this room. And everybody in the world. We go on. We read. Where did I leave off? Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, all you kindreds of people. 
Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Every, all of the earth, all of the earth is going to fear. Now, we're not talking just about the human beings, but every beast and every animal, even the rocks are going to be crying out. The day is coming. Say among the heathen, by, by the way, <laughs> the opposition sometimes when these people complain, and you know, and I'm talking to them, and uh, they're, they're saying, well, you know, we don't necessarily believe the Bible, and I, I don't hold to that, or, uh, you know, as, as I had at that time, that little rebellion I had amongst some of the ladies at the tea party, where they thought that I was giving God too great a place and, and during the meetings. Uh, and, and so when I used the message, well, I can understand you want me to try to, to please the Christians and then please the heathen too. And it's like, you're calling us heathen just because we don't believe in God? Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's, right. that's, that's what the Bible says. Amen. You're heathen. Amen. Right. Amen. And so, just do this. Just uh, get that settled with yourself. Just yeah. walk in front of the mirror, look in that mirror and say, Hi, heathen. Because that's what you are. Okay? God said it. No one ever won an argument with him. Right? Amen. So, Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established, and it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar in the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful, and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice before the Lord, for he cometh for you. Do you understand? What he's talking about when he's talking about let the trees rejoice. Trees are living things. Did you know that? Amen. That's right. And and those trees during the eternity will live forever. They'll live forever. So even the trees and the bushes and all of those things that God has made will live forever with us. Let the field be joyful and then all that is there. And then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice before the Lord. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. The Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. A fire goeth before him and burneth up his enemies around about. Turn over uh, to uh, for 2 Thessalonians. And in 2 Thessalonians, I want to just go to uh, chapter 1. And I want to read verses 5 through 10. Now, when we see, when we look around today, we see the evil of ISIS and the liberals uh, as they're killing uh, Christians, especially the little children being slaughtered, we wonder, God, how many times have you wondered? How many times have people said, and I've had people ask me, where is God now? Where is God now? I've had people with things that have gotten very tough and they've lost someone. And they get angry at you because they look at you and you represent to them God. Where's your God now? I've had people say that to me more than once. You know what I tell them? He's right where he's always been. He didn't step away, you did. You see. So the answer is, he is on the throne. God is in complete control. He has already made provisions for all of his children. And folks, he will also render to the wicked their just reward. And you can always be absolutely positively assured that God is just. God will never ever punish anyone more than they deserve. If anything, God is extremely merciful. But folks, even though he's long-suffering, right. guess what? He's not slack. Right. 
Because you're going to get what you have coming. Amen. 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 And uh, the heathen do not like to hear that message. They just don't. Verse 5, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Which is manifest token of righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you also suffer, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. And the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, a flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord, and from the glory of his power, and he shall come to be glorified in his saints, and to be admired in all of them who believe. Now listen, on all of them who believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Now folks, uh, you have today, we have a lot of carnal Christians, and I would probably Amen. say the majority of, of people that are Christians, the ones that uh, are saved, are, are carnal. In other words, uh, there are many, many, as the Bible says, that have a profession of faith that don't have a possession. The vast majority of people who have a profession of faith are not saved. Uh, our Lord tells you that in Matthew chapter 7. He said, many, many uh, will say in those days, Lord, Lord, have I not done so many things, raised the dead, healed the sick, and all of these things. And he says, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. See, so there's a whole lot of people out there that will tell you they know the Lord Jesus, but guess what he's saying? No, I don't know them. Exactly. Right? Amen. And so that's the vast majority. But then there's another group out there. You probably heard about that fellow called King David. Amen. Now, King David was a very, very righteous man. Uh, yet, he was carnal in a lot of ways. Uh, David had some, had some problems. I mean, he... Uh, he wouldn't had he wouldn't murder one of his, his men who were close to us. <coughs> he got himself in a lot of trouble. Sometimes he was out there caught telling lies. So old King David, even though he was a carnal Christian, God looked upon his heart. Amen. Amen. And see God judges us just not just for what we do, but for why we do it. Amen. And people will always uh, make statements to me, well, uh, you know, he killed that man. Shouldn't he get the death penalty? Well, why did he kill him? That's, that's the question. You if he did. was defending his family or himself. No, you see. So God, again, uh, judges us as he looks upon our heart. He's the only one that can look upon your heart. That's right. And God is, God, like I said, he's always perfectly fair. And so, and he shall come to be glorified all his saints both the pious and the carnal. All of his saints, all of his saints uh, will be uh, admiring him and uh, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. So we want to praise the good Lord for that. Amen. You see, Hallelujah. you're going to have a, a lot of different degrees of when you get to heaven. The saints will have a lot of different degrees of standing. Uh, some are going to have a very high place. This is why I'm continuously talking about placing up crowns in heaven, placing up crowns in heaven. Uh, it would be a really horrible thing to get to heaven and then know that uh, you wasted so much time, even though that will be taken away from you, that you could have placed up many, many more crowns in glory. Scripture says some of us will be, will be given positions like during the millennial kingdom, like like judges, we'll all be judges, but some will be like mayors and some will be like governors or whatever. Uh, according to the works that you did in these bodies. So what does that tell me? Tell me, there's not one of us in here, including me, that has any time to waste. Amen? Amen. Every one of us, every single one of us needs to be placed in the first crowns and then working as hard as we can.
All right, I want to go pick it up. I'll go back to uh, where we started there and pick it up in Psalm 97. The Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about. Oh, I already started, I already did that, didn't I? Let me pick it up in uh, verse 4 of 97. Well, no, we went all the way over to 98, didn't we? By the way, uh, 98, Psalm 98, this is very interesting because it's the only psalm uh, that doesn't have a title other than a psalm. All of the rest has a psalm of praise or a psalm of this or a psalm of exhortation, but its, it's only title is a psalm. Sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord hath made known his salvation, his righteousness hath he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. He that remembereth his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praises. Sing unto the Lord with a harp and with a harp and the voice of a song. With trumpets and the sound of a cornet. Make a joyful noise before the Lord, the King. Let the sea roar in the fullness thereof. Let the world and they that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands. And let the hills be joyful together. Now, when he's speaking this way, we, <laughs> folks, uh, some of you might remember that prophecy club that was here. It was Dan Johnson some years ago. And I worked with him, and I put him on the radio, and I helped him get real good, reputable speakers, people who were, were very reputable. But then they started getting some people that were not so reputable, okay? And that's when I broke off of Steve. You probably remember that. That's when I, I said no. Uh, I actually was at one of their, uh, their prophecy conferences one day when a guy was... was uh, in total error, everything he was speaking, you know. And uh, so people started walking up to me and asking me, is this, that true? And I said, no, it's not. Okay, and I just stirred it on. In other words, hey, you're supposed to be here. You're supposed to be a part of this thing. Yeah, I'm not here to lie to people, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, you guys need to quit lying to people too. But anyhow, one of the things that we had, uh, one of the, what I'm telling you, I'm saying all this to say that they had this one guest, and, he had supposedly died in a car wreck, and while he was dead, uh, he found himself sitting in a chair, and the chair went to heaven, and it went to heaven backwards. And he's talking about, now, you know, the Bible clearly teaches that, that heaven is another dimension, the third heaven. Uh, you know, all through Scripture we've showed you where a door opens right above and God steps out. Well, according to this fellow, he was, uh, he was in this chair, and he was going backwards. He was passing all of these planets and all of these stars, and he was seeing colors that he had never seen before, new colors. And, uh, you know, it's not like somebody that's like taking LSD or something. <laughs> but then, when he got to heaven, he was talking about how uh, he was, was walking down the highway, and he took the passage out of Jeremiah where he talks about... Uh, the trees were clapping their hands, and the flowers were clapping their hands. And, uh, you know, just like here it says the floods uh, clap their hands. Now, he is speaking symbolically, not literally. And here's how I know this, because I know this for a fact. Trees don't have hands. <coughs> Leaves don't have hands. Flowers don't have hands. Yep. And if you've ever been out in the ocean, okay, the only hands you'll find out there are on the ships. They're going back and forth. Exactly. Uh, but this guy is up there telling people that as he walked down this road this, of gold, it was solid gold, and he was following behind these people all dressed in white. And all of the leaves, or the trees, were singing to him. Huh. And the flowers were all clapping their hands and uh, bending over. And uh, 
I thought, my oh my, you know, and what's this guy smoking? <laughs> you know, there are times in Scripture where, you know, Scripture makes it pretty clear he's speaking symbolically. Now, he goes on together, uh, verse, before the Lord, for he cometh to judge the earth with righteousness, shall judge the world and with the people 